Let's seize the artifact. It's right there for us to seize. Would you look at this? A crown of some kind? They seem to keep their distance from it. Maybe it's cursed. Look what I found. Let me take a look. Looks like ancient Imarian. If you find it, send for... This appears to be a name. That has to be a Sorak name. They were protecting it. It must be of great value to them. Take the crown, take the crown. <laughs> well, Siobhan is going to take the crown. Take it then. Sure. So it's about choosing who takes it. Yes, I understand. Who are you talking to? Wait, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Why did you put it on? We have no idea what it does, whether it's evil or, or anything. What? I... oh... I... It, it... I just kind of had to. We're supposed to share the loot, by the way. Perhaps we should rest before we head back. I say we go, before the owner of that unpronounceable name shows his ugly face. The mission is done, after all. Is it? Did someone cut off a Sorax head? Oh, all right then. I'll do it. The sooner we go, the sooner we can get back to Kerakiflin. After you, friends. We are going to have problems with food, though. So our objective right now is to bring the crown back, I assume. But did, did, did we cut a Sorax head? I don't see any, any Sorax at all. I think we're good with a head. I think we're good. Do we, or do we not, have a jump spell? That is something I want to pay attention to. We have Bless, Healing Word, Shield of Faith. I don't think we do. Because I there's some secrets, do you know? Is that over here? Spiritual hap weapon? And, nah, we don't. What a shame. Uh, maybe Arish could. I don't know what... We got Expeditious Retreat, but that's not it. Yeah. Yeah. No jump spell. And the reason why... I, I, I explained it before, but the reason why I wanted the jump spell is because we have some secrets that can only be accessed by jumping a lot. Over there. Uh, and there's others as well, but not just not just that. Okay. We're leaving. Uh, oh, yeah, because I reloaded. Now I need to go around. That doesn't matter. We're good. All we have to do is go back the way we came. It's quite a long journey, honestly. But we made it. I mean, we made it in the first time. Wait a minute. Is there another part of this area? No, it's just this exit. Yeah, we made it in the first time. Going out could have been a problem, but it wasn't. This doesn't go anywhere, even though it very much looks like it. But I think they, if they reuse this map, they, they just add an exit location there. And the job's a good one, I suppose. Or Bob is your uncle, one or the other. Leave the area, yes please. Now, to starve on our way back. Oh boy. Travel. And we are traveling fast. Two long rests, that's not bad at all. It is 95 miles, three days. Let's do it. The party did not find anything useful to eat. The party passes an old imperial marketplace. Our heroes take well-deserved rest, but the mood is somber. Why is it somber? Are you feeling poorly? You seem a bit pasty-faced. <sighs> I don't feel too good. Shit, I knew that a hunk of junk was cursed. You don't know that. Just get rid of it. No, we need it. Need it? For what? For its power. I can feel it deep inside. Are you okay? I just need to rest for a bit. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good either. I'm exhausted as well. Maybe the curse has affected us all. Stop it. Don't be ridiculous. I propose we set up camp and get some rest. 
Arya starts at the Game of Dice, Coralie, Coralie performs armor maintenance, and we are now resting. The party has finished its long rest. Four units of food have been consumed. Finds an apple tree. Eight food rations. It's lovely. Arish plays a game of dice. It's also lovely. Siobhan performs arm maintenance and the party fails to detect an approaching enemy group. That is less lovely. I didn't like that. So now we're going to be surprised. We're rolling pretty decent on the initiative. Well, Siobhan always runs pretty decent on the initiative. The good thing is it's another necromancer. This, guy, this time it's a dark apprentice. Um... And um, and they're far away, so the surprise actually doesn't doesn't do much. Ah! Prevent incoming attack. Yes, please cast that spell. It's the oh, it's the it's wait. Cast spell. Yeah, it's a shield. I'm casting shield, right? Shielded. Yeah. In your face. He rolled twenty, not a twenty, but still. Hmm. Well, night vision is good because that guy clearly has it. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do. So this this one over here needs to be hit, and I cannot leave. Uh, I could go over here, actually. And we have this. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and uh, try to smite you. Uh, yeah, smite. Palpable hit. In indeed, I'm pretty sure palpable doesn't mean what I think it does in English. Okay, so we can cast spells. Uh, actually, we could. Let's do that. Uh, Shield of Faith on you. On you, because you don't have a shield. So, now for Deg. Deg will have disadvantage, because Dark Apprentice is unlit, and range attack with enemy nearby is what you get. Not an attack of opportunity, I don't think. Uh, I thought Deg... It's unlit, but... Uh, we're gonna disengage, aren't we? Yeah. Well, let's disengage. Proceed. Disadvantage on attacks is uh, is really grim. It's it's really it's not great. There is a hide place here for us, which is not again not great. I really wish. Can you? The interface could give me just a a little bit of a hint. Oh, you liar. You liar, said that I wasn't seen over there. Look at that. What? What is the... In okay, well, um... We're gonna go over there. And now we are gonna cutting action dash to wherever. Oh, this isn't what I thought it was. Okay, uh, get yourself over there. No hiding. That's quite a shame. Then we have Cor Coralie. Coralie is going to smite this guy in the face. Or not smite, because that's not how it works. But let's see what I can do here. A relatively good hit. Vulnerable has been applied. I do not know what that does. But I like it. It, I, it sounds like a good time. Uh, we are we are rested once, uh, and th that should be fine. What is the health of, or the health of this thing? We do not know. Uh, actually, I should know, because I dealt six. It's half health, so... I only need, I do need to deal a little bit of good damage. Let's go with a couple of magic missiles. And I don't have range over here. So abort that. And let's get yourself over there. Two casts. A couple of these. And I have a couple of those. Very nice. So that should be a kill. Oh, it's D4s, not D6s. Well, that's bad. That dealt damage. Shield of Faith did apply. And it dealt six damage. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Let's attack you. Very poor attack. So we're just gonna end the turn there. Dag. Oh, the map keeps going. We are gonna find a place to hide. Uh, I should be able to just hide, yeah, with my normal action, and then dash this way. Perfect. Perfect is absolutely the word that describes what happened. That is just, it's bad. It's, it's, the uh, RNG hates us. I can cast another spell, though. One of these over there should take care of business, and three over there. 
You never stood a chance. Uh, yeah, no, no, they, they did. They, well, it's kind of complicated. Killing me, or killing one of us, is a victory for an enemy, even though the enemy might die in the process. Arias is now weakened. Oh, man. Okay, well, I'm not going to be able to get close enough. But uh, what I can do, sneaky, sneaky, is light a torch. Well, in fact, I can actually just move. Uh, I, uh, I can dash right there. Hello. Yeah. Because now what I can do is I can use Deg to take a shot with advantage now. Because uh, cause otherwise, if uh, if the Dark Apprentice was unlit, it wouldn't have advantage because the, it, it cancels it out. But this is a an 18 plus 10, or plus 7, and that's a kill. There we go. It's not too, uh, not too complicated. Really not too complicated. I like it. I think the other one, the other Necromancer that we found were, uh, was worse. We found a set of engraved bone dice. I like it. We have a dagger and a ration pouch, which is also pretty awesome. And then the skeletons that might, they might not be summoned. They're just short swords and arrows. If these are summoned, can you summon skeletons and get their loot? Kill them, you know? Is this like Morrowind? No, in Mo actually, in Morrowind, you can't get the loot. I mean, you can, but the game will crash. You can get their souls, though, but yeah, but either way. Um, oh, Dag, you don't need to sneak. It's all right. We did it. We absolutely did it. Let's go back to sleep, I suppose. The party fails to detect an approaching enemy. Start. Uh, Dag starts singing an old song, and everybody complains because they only like the new songs. Uh, day three, they consumed everything. Uh, Arish killed a deer, so we got some uh, some food there. That's really nice. And we are in town. Did we level up or something? I don't think so. Against all odds, we have recovered proof that Sorax do exist. How do you feel? Better. Maybe that sickness was nothing. What about the crown? You know the council will probably take it. No! We can't hide the fact that we found it with the Sorax. It's our loot. Ours! We have to declare anything of historical value. And they have the right to buy it. And if it's priceless? Come on, they can do whatever they want. Sure. We must wait and see, and hope for the best. They'd better remember that we fought the Sorax for this. Ours, my precious. Or something to that extent. It definitely felt very much like it. Okay, let me take care of inventory here, because it is a mess. And now it's good. And we have Annie. I might as well talk to her. Clear skies, my friends. Can I, does she buy things? Do you sell healing potions? No, we don't. Okay. Well, thank you. Stay in the light, my friends. Yeah, some uh, other people sell things. So what we need to do right now is go to the Grave Keeps Cask. I also need to talk to some of the some of the friendly people around here because they might have uh, missions for us. Let's see what this is as well. Pick up quests. Thank you. Sorak Relic. The Sor Akath, or as the other uh, guy put it, Sor Akath. And right in <laughs> right the next sentence just pronounced it Sorakath. Uh, have attacked the outpost of Kerlem in the marches. They must have left traces, weapons, something. Search their camp in the caves. Bring any piece of equipment that could be of Sorakath origin. Client the Church of Anar. Reward a vial of stardust. Recommended level four. Oh, uh, we are level three. Goblin culture. I mean, I, mean, I suppose I could. No, wait, we just started? Oh, well, let's let's do the goblin first. We, we'll see what that what what that button means. We encountered goblins in the cave at Kerlem. There are scholars at the Tower of Knowledge who believe that the goblins have evolved a written language. So go back there, find a potential example of goblin writing, and bring it back to a quest board. Client, the Tower of Knowledge, reward a gem worth three hundred gold pieces, five level three spell scrolls, and I think I might have that. Don't I have the thing? 
I clearly don't. And then... In progress. Oh, yeah. So start just means accept. Let's go for it. Find a Sorak item. I might... Have that. Nope. Don't have that. Okay. Let's continue then, I suppose. Looking around. Because I need to sell things. Let me also rotate the camera here. Ooh. Welcome to Gorim's Emporium. Where's... And that's done. Okay. Now, uh, what I was saying about talking to people around here, this is where we need to go. But apparently there's, uh, there's other people around that will give us quests. There's this gate that doesn't actually lead anywhere? Stay in the light, citizens. It's kind of weird. Because you can't even interact with it. Lord Karen. Ah, deputies. I see you found some nice, shiny loot. So, have you brought us the head of a Sorak? One head, slightly damaged. Marike preserve us. I'm sorry I asked. At least it's dead. You should have seen it alive. I can only imagine. When's the next council meeting? When? But now, of course. The rumor of your return has already reached the palace. Wait. They're waiting for you. They are? Well, more for this. But come on. Now there's a trophy. And by the way, who's crazy now? All right, you were right and we were wrong. They do exist. Happy now? Kid, I've seen more than anyone in this town, yet nobody seems to believe me. Maybe it's a curse. The curse of being surrounded by idiots. If you don't mind, Merton, we have business to attend to. Right. Say hello to the old lady for me, Karen. Who's this guy again? Arwin Merton. He used to be a legend. The first scavenger, they say. But now, well... <laughs> You can see for yourself. Who's this old lady? Just ignore him. Let's go. Your thoughts, Dean Fasek? I, uh, well, it looks very much as the scriptures describe. Well then, it seems we have a problem. It's a disaster. We all know what the Sora Akat did on Tirmar. There's something else. What? A crown? Hmm, interesting. Very nice find. We don't want to sell it. Why not? You know we pay well. We want to keep it. I'd like to take a look at it, though. Come on, let them take a look. Thank you. Any ideas? It's quite massive. Clearly Imperial in style. These ruins remind me of the Imperial Schools of Magic. I have a spell I'd like to cast on this. My lords, this deputy is clearly unwell. What? What happened? You passed out. Where are we? The Temple of Einar. Marshal Beric Sunblaze himself invited us to stay here. We certainly made an impression on the Council. They believe you're attuned to the Crown, that you can't be separated from it. What? So it is cursed? They're not sure. All these big brains and they're stumped. They cast spells on the Crown, on you. Between that and the Sorax, we caused quite a fuss out there. They'll reconvene the Council when you're ready. But trust me, there's a lot of people who want to talk to you first. Oh, she has her equipment. Okay, I was uh, I was concerned that the game would uh, would do the thing that so many games do, which is just unequip your character, and then you have to figure out what you had equipped, and you're never quite sure, and it's uh, it's a pain. Although in this case, I actually took care of inventory before going to Lord Karen, so 
I could, uh, I, I was pretty sure I was going to find the, my inventory. That is a lovely, I can't really rotate the camera in a way that allows me to, to look at that. That's a lovely, uh, what is it called? The, these things. Yeah, it is, it is lovely, these things. Marshall Barrick Sunblaze. Lord Sunblaze, thank you for your hospitality. It's the least we can do for the deputies who proved that there are still Sorax on Celasta. You've proved we cannot relax our vigilance. Did you find anything else that could help us track them? There was a parchment. If you find it, send for the char. You can read that? That last word, it's not Tamarian. It's in the Sorakath tongue. I knew it. It means general. You were wise to run. Also, the fanatics we fought near that old tower. They all had this tattoo on their arm. It seems to support the idea that they were working for the Sorax under duress. It is indeed one of their ways. Now this is the A of Erevet. Can you enlighten us? Between the myth and what we've seen, it's confusing. Of course. We paladins and clerics of Anar are the guardians of these memories. Our ancestors fought the war against the Sorakath. Their god, Sortar, gave them dark powers of treachery, mind reading, and shape changing. They infiltrated the human society, corrupted the hearts of men. At some point, everyone was suspected to be a Sorak in disguise. Distrust broke humanity. Sortar had won. He corrupted even Erevad, god of the Inquisitors. The gods themselves decided to run away from Tirmar. They opened the rift for the humans to escape to Celasta. Many of them didn't make it. It was a tragedy. At the sight of the rift, thousands of Sorak tried to cross. Sortar himself tried. The rift was closed in a gigantic blast. Our kings and heroes, Manakalan's masters of magic, were all wiped out. So, how could Sorax have survived, escaped, and then thrived on Celasta? I suppose that's another one of their tricks. But for those who had survived the war, the Exodus, it was paramount to stay vigilant, to keep the memory alive. The memory of what Sorax were, what they could do, so that if one day they were to return, we'd be ready. I'm sorry to say, after a thousand years, only a few of us remain. Now, most people believe Sorax are a mere legend. But you brought us proof the Sorax are not extinct. We fought different ones. Do you know more? The bulk of their army are foot soldiers with poisoned spines. They breed a cast of albino priests able to cast spells. Some of them are deadly assassins, invisible, venomous. Others are giant brutes. The scriptures talk of elite warriors, anti-paladins, the Shikath. How do they get people to worship them? They get into people's minds, learn their darkest secrets, their fears, their shameful desires. With that, they can blackmail, corrupt, and finally, recruit. It's much easier for them than to duplicate, and very efficient. Can they really impersonate people? It's been proven, though it's a long process. They used to kidnap a target, study it for weeks, sometimes months. One of their chosen ones would transform into a perfect duplicate. Upon death, they would return to their original form. Well, that's all very scary, but thanks, it's going to help us. You're welcome, deputies. If you find anything else connected to the Sor Akath or their allies, bring it to the temple. Talk to Chaplain Delan Lark. You will be well rewarded. Whenever you're ready, the council will meet again. 
they're just mocking us now with a Sor Akath. Because half the time they don't actually say, pronounce it like that. The Sortar. Those are, you need to also, it's not just saying Sortar. Because if you say Sortar, that's not his name. It's Sortar. You, you need to go get a grave voice. Can I talk to you again, Marshall? Hmm. I really like the setup for, for the, the Sorakath, honestly. 